Hey there, how's it going? Now, do you realize what was wrong with what I just said? Do you know why I sounded like an idiot just now? I'll tell you. You probably don't even think about it. But if you're me, you can't stop thinking about this all the time. Why do people say hi there, hey there, hello there, when they greet you? It doesn't make any sense, I tell you. Why are you giving me a location after you greet me? There. There. And it's so unspecific, too. Just there. My name isn't there. Why are you saying there after your greeting? I'm assuming, okay, let's assume it's short form for hello person over there. Okay. That's, that makes the most sense, at least, right? Even still, it's not like you point when you say, hey there, hey person over there, pointing at that person. You kind of do with your eyes, I suppose. But generally, you say, hey there when you're looking right at the guy two feet away from you, right? So why are you saying hey there? Hi there. Hello there. Say hey Etho or something like that. Makes a lot more sense. Anyways, hey there guys. Welcome back to another episode of the Let's Play series. You know, it just occurred to me, I don't know if I tried this, what happens if you use a water bucket on a coarse fruit seed? Does it give you the seed? It doesn't. Okay. <laughs> Darn. It's like, man, I bet you I could automate this farm now. No, you still don't get the seed. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, so currently this is the way I gotta harvest this farm. It takes about five minutes or so. And then we have a button down here. We just press it. Let's the water out. Breaks all the plants. Pushes all the seeds into our, our flow flow thing over here. <laughs> Our water channel. There, that makes more sense. And it does take a while while for the graphics to update here every time I do it. It's kind of weird. Uh-huh. And then they get sorted and then the chorus fruit gets auto-smelted too. There it goes. Yeah, so basically I'm working on our ice road in the nether, guys. I want to extend it about 700 blocks, and then it's going to attach to that woodland mansion we found. And then we can bring back the, the Vindicators, the Johnnies, and there was a whole bunch of llamas in that area, too. Alright, so that was uh, that was a long time for me, but just moments for you guys. But we got the path done in the nether, and I'm going to start transporting these guys back home. I think we got to go this way. It's weird, like... The other day, I was flying around looking for llamas to to do that firework thing with. I flew so far and, like, only found eight or so. There's over 50 in this mountain range. I'm sure of it. There's so many. It's unbelievable. Oh, all the mobs have spawned now. <laughs> okay. There must not be many caves around here either. There's, like, 20 mobs up there. we got to get them through the portal. There you go. Uh-oh. Zombie went through. Okay, so now we find out if they're all gonna die as soon as we go through here. <laughs> Are they stuck in the portal the frame? Like horses always get. Oh. Oh, I think maybe a few of them. No, they're okay. They're okay. Oh, man. There's a lot of them. All right, guys, come on. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. This is the scary part. I didn't have enough purper blocks. There wasn't enough, I tell ya. They seem fine, though. No. Bad. Whew. Wait, did he take away the ground? No, the ground's still there. Good. All right, that pigman needs to die. He's breaking up my caravan. Go around, you stupid llama. <laughs> Go around. He will not walk on that track. Aw, oh, they died. Are you kidding me? They went to the wrong portal and died. After I set up the portal, tested it, worked, and then they teleport over here? Okay. Well, we got three anyway. 
All right, guys. Well, I think it's official. I got some weird glitch in my world here with the portals. Like, I, I set this portal up here. I tried it. It worked both ways. Sent the llamas through. And then they ended up way over there for some reason. Even though all those portals were broken. And it seemed to send them underground. And they just, like, suffocated and died. Can you not... I thought this is what you used to breed them. Did I forget? <laughs> Can you not breed them? Wait a minute. Uh-oh. I might need to look this up. Ah, okay. You know what it is? It's hay bales. Hay bales. We were close. They might need to be tamed as well. These guys aren't tamed at the moment. We'll try them out without taming them. Yeah. Looks like we gotta tame them. Okay. And you. And you. Do, 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 do. <laughs> There we go. We got a little baby llama. Awesome. So phase two of this, I got these guys over to Sandy City like I wanted. Uh, I have also caught a wolf, and he's sitting in the nether tunnel right now. I don't want to bring him over until I got this all set up, but basically I'm going to, underneath the path here, set up a little crawl space for him where he can run around where they can't get him. And then we're going to leave them free to run under the path here. The llamas will chase them above ground and it should hopefully look pretty cool like they'll, they'll walk along the path here and it will also be a method of storing the llamas without having to worry about them running into cactus or something stupid like that. So I'm going to try make a path underneath the path here <laughs> all around the city. All right, very good, very good. So we got that all set up. Now we're ready to move our dog into place here. This is a cool trick, by the way. If you have a mob in a boat, and you know, sometimes when you try to get them out, you, you whack the boat and it hits the animal instead. This is like a safe way of doing it. Just use a lead, pulls them right out. And uh, also in Minecraft 1.11.1, they made a change, a bug fix, where you can actually lead hostile wolves. This is not a tamed wolf the hostile one, which is what we need because those stupid tamed wolves, <laughs> they always teleport to you and die. Even if they're in a minecart, they're like totally useless. So this guy, he's going to stay underneath our path here. So I basically just chiseled out an area all the way under. And I made it fairly wide just to increase his uh, pathfinding chance. Uh, so hopefully he doesn't sit around too much. We'll let him go and just see how he moves. I would love it if he would just like run straight all the time, but that's not going to happen. <laughs> and I could put him in a minecart and force him to move, but it would be very loud. And also, they tend to fight minecarts anyway. Can't really control them. Oh, please move at least a little bit, though. Okay. No. That wasn't very good. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully he moves a fair bit. We might... Might need that minecart, though. Oh, I heard the wolf. All right, we'll let them go. Some of them found them. Yeah, they found them. Okay, cool. <laughs> so the idea is, wherever the wolf goes is where the llamas are going to go. They won't break off from the wolf ever. So I don't have to worry about putting these guys away. They'll just they'll gravitate towards the wolf always. And I would like it if they would like walk along the path here. So that's why we might need a minecart, because that wolf isn't moving very much. Whoa! Okay, that's a wild, wild rest right there. <laughs> so here's the other problem with uh, using a minecart, though. Uh, I think we're going to have to, but we can't just run it straight through here. If we do, the wolf is going to be faster than the llamas. And then they'll break the connection if, if he gets away from them. So we have to do like the zigzag thing. And hopefully they don't zigzag as well. <laughs> hopefully they walk straight. And also hopefully the minecart doesn't get stuck. A lot of possible complications with this. Okay, he's moving pretty good. I can hear them moving above ground. Let's go check him out. We cannot let the wolf see the llamas. If we do, I think he'll get aggro. And then this is all done for. 
Possibly. I'm not sure, though. We might be able to reset it somehow. Um, okay. What are they doing? One of them... One of them broke the connection over here. I guess he was too far away. So we'll bring him closer. Those guys are following him. They're kind of zigzagging a little bit, though, it seems. They look like they're drunk. <laughs> Got a pack of drunk llamas. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, he did a spin even. Oh, snap. We could probably move the wolf a little bit faster than that, but that looks kind of funny too. <laughs> Alright, so it's kind of working right now, but not as well as I would like it to. You see, they keep breaking the connection. The wolf gets too far ahead of them. Oh, lost another one there. And then when it goes by, they'll, they'll pick it up again, but... Uh, I think I'm going to try to switch over to water streams instead of the minecarts, see if that's any better. Okay, so I think I think I figured out a pattern that'll work here. What we're going to do is half slab and then slab over there. So it's going to push the wolf up on top of the slab, and then we're going to have another water stream over here. It's been a while since I did anything with uh, moving mobs around with water. And I'm not sure I ever did figure out a way of doing it with a one tall mob like a wolf. But this should work. All right? Maybe I did, I just can't remember. <laughs> um, yes. So if if he's stuck in this water for too long, he'll drown. But he should get pushed through right away. Unless he gets stuck on the stairs up there. Hopefully. I think he's bigger than that. the spacing between the stairs though, right? Hopefully. Okay, so that's kind of working. It's pretty slow, though. It would look better if there wasn't four of them all grouped together like there is. But it's a lot more consistent than the minecart, for sure. Okay, so I decided to go with the water system after all. So, little guy, it's been great this time we've shared together. I know, I love you. But this is the last time you're going to see the sun. <laughs> You're gonna go live with the sewer people now. Say hello to the Ninja Turtles for me. They taught me everything I know. Seriously. Oh no! <laughs> you jerk. Alright, let's see you fight this. Go! Go! Go inside! Okay. Oh, we got him! We got him! Yes! <laughs> Alright, dog is locked and loaded. We are ready to try this out now. There seems to be an Endermite somewhere, too. I just got it around a, a loop right now, just a small loop, to try this out. Okay. Okay, so I got some bad news. <laughs> that guy didn't make it. He's not with us anymore. Uh, I sent in one of my team guys to try this. Yeah, why are you doing that? That's not good. You're gonna die. That water is pushing you, is it not? Oh! Nope. Hmm. I should have used... Oh. <laughs> I should have used stairs, maybe. Alright, guys. Well, I tell you what. For the sake of variety, we're going to move on here for today. And I'll try to get that fixed up for next time. I think I can get it working just by changing those slabs to stairs. But I could be wrong. And this could drag on forever. <laughs> so, uh, what we're going to do here is start setting up our mushroom forest. And here is a, a good trick for you guys. This is common knowledge for a lot of people, but if you don't know, this is like one of the best ways of uh, quickly crafting blocks. Just shift click to get the nether wart out of here. Or you can do this with snowballs or whatever you're trying to craft together. And then just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Wherever your mouse is hovered over is where it goes in the crafting grid. And then shift click it. There we go. Easy crafting. So, these blocks are crazy expensive, by the way. <laughs> I have been saving up. We got seven stacks. It's not very much. So, yeah, just outside of the man cave here, to our right is Sandy City. And then to the left, we have this swamp that we haven't really done anything with. I did a little bit here just to try, you know, spicing it up a little bit. You guys seem to like this, so I'm going to leave it. And we might stick a little bit to this theme as well. But then we got this whole area out here, which hasn't really been touched. <laughs> and I want to do this biome enhancement thing, right? Why have a flat, boring swamp 
we've seen a million of uh, right next to my home here. We, w we should try to do something a little bit cooler. I made one custom mushroom when these first came out, and I think that looks pretty good, but I also want to try to make some big mushroom trees to go along with like these smaller ones. Um, so maybe we'll put one right over here. Let's see if we can, we can build one of these together. So it's kind of like building a custom tree. You just put down like a, a base, a trunk of some sorts, give it a crazy random shape, and then start building it up, fattening it up as you go. And it's going to be amazing. <laughs> uh, I have a rough idea of how to do this. Uh, the cool thing about building mushrooms compared to custom trees is uh, with mushrooms, you don't need to place a million leaf blocks. You just you can use a symmetrical pattern even, and it will look good. Uh, while custom trees, you got to place down so many leaves, and it takes forever to build them because of that. So yeah, I'm going to make this fairly tall. And probably about two, three blocks wide, I would say. Maybe. How's that looking? All right, it's a start. It's a start. Um, now, what I want to do is start branching out as well. So, like this looks a little weird over here. This is like hanging off, it looks like. So we need to change that. So maybe let's try to create a bit more continuum here. Well, why is that broken? <laughs> that was weird. Uh-huh. Start bulking this out. Yeah. Oh, actually, see, like, this is bad when you have a, a block here and a block here. You should always continue it. So I'm going to put one more block right there. There, that looks better. Um, maybe even a block here. And then You don't want any, like, big flat spots like this either. You want to always put a block here or... Or something like that and then we're gonna start making branches so mushroom trees have branches in case you didn't know we're gonna probably just go out three or four blocks start curving it up like that gonna keep these pretty thin and then maybe go up one more and then we're gonna do a three by three thing of this this stuff and I'm not even really planning this out too much as I go, as you can tell. <laughs> but I think it's going to look pretty good. I tried making some of these in creative, and uh, it was very easy. And, and each one only took like 5-10 minutes. So, I I'm pretty excited about this. Okay. Another trick I see I've seen people do is they grow jungle trees, and then they replace all the leaves with uh, with these netherwort blocks. And then the... The trunk of the tree they replace with bone, and that looks pretty good too, but you can't really do that in survival because the tree will start dying as you start replacing the blocks. Yeah, that's what I want to do, just like that. Probably have like two of those, two or three of those branches on each of these mushroom trees sticking out. So then I'll probably put one a little bit higher up and maybe one more and then a big cap on the top. Yeah, so I'm trying to give this main trunk a little bit of character, so you can see it kind of curves out to the right, and it's starting to curve back, and I think that looks pretty cool. And wherever you can take advantage of the, the depth of it, uh, try to. So you can see it like goes in over there and, and over there, and it's out over here. It's not like a big flat thing. Uh, on this other side, though, we got a bit of a flat thing going on, right? So you got to try, try to break that up wherever you can. Uh, where does it make most sense? So it's it's thin here, so maybe we, we bulk it up here. All right. Yeah, I think that'll look good. Nope, <laughs> it needs more. If you just have like little things like that, sometimes they look weird too. Um, we could try to maybe do that. Awesome, so I'm pretty happy with that for the trunk. I think that looks good, nice and organic. Uh, looks good for most angles as well. You always want to take a look around and just double check. This angle, maybe not as nice, but, you know, you don't want to get too crazy overboard or you'll spend forever on this kind of stuff. Um, so now we got to add maybe two more branches and the, the cap on the top, and it's done, I would say. So the main trunk goes off to the right, curves to the right, and then we have a little branch. Um, so it's kind of going up and then it starts curving to the left. So I think we should put another branch over there. It's kind of how plants grow if you ever like look at them and study them. Um, if the main branch 
curves, or if it grows a branch, then the main branch kind of curves away from the branch it just grew uh, for a lot of plants. Okay, so maybe we don't want to just do it straight either. We want to have a bit of variety to it. Um, it won't look as good as if we do it straight, but our eyes will kind of correct for the, the odd shape, I think. And then maybe we'll go over here. Yeah, there we go. I think that looks pretty good. That's the one we did together. And it comes out two blocks uh, forward compared to this one. We also never want to have them on the same height level. So it's also two blocks higher up. And it just creates a staggered effect. It looks good that way, I think. I added one more on the back here. Maybe not so good. <laughs> it looks weird. It just comes straight out. Maybe let's add one more bone block right there. Does that help it? It, looks, it needs to look structurally supported. Uh, yeah, that would work, except now it looks weird over there. You see we have that block and that block on the same height. We always want to stagger things if we can, and we definitely can here. So maybe we'll go up two. And should we take that out? Let's take that out, fix that. Okay, so then at the top of the trunk, we're going to do the big mushroom cap on on the very tippy top. <laughs> We're gonna do pretty much the same shape, except uh, we'll make it come out on the sides here. Make it a little bit bigger than the, the little ones. And then we're gonna do two rings down from that. So come out one block and one block down. Like this. Uh, yeah, kind of keep that shape and then come out one more after that. Like that. Okay, so how does it look from a distance here? Oh yeah, I think that's pretty cool, right? Yeah, I like that a lot. Awesome. So I'm going to try to build a few of these. I have uh, two of them pre-built in a, a creative world. I'll copy over here. Uh, this episode is supposed to be up already, though. <laughs> so we're going to have to wrap it up. I don't have time to build them and show you. Uh, but we'll check them out next time. Another thing I would recommend is... Uh, putting some end rods underneath. That way they'll be lit up at night. And also kind of looks cool, like they got little dangly things that mushrooms sometimes have. Uh-huh. You know, I was watching a, a YouTube video the other day, and apparently there are actually glowing mushrooms. They're green. They look amazing. Lu luminescent mushrooms. Check it out, man. So cool. But uh, anyways, guys, I think we should call it here for today. So here is the comment I picked out. It says, hey, Etho, be very careful in the latest update. Pistons now count as solid block. So for your pop-up sheep farm, the sheep will suffocate when they go down to eat grass. I copied your farm design into my single player world and had to replace the pistons that the sheep stand in with glass. Okay. Well, thank you very much for that uh, that warning. Uh, it's a little late, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. As soon as I updated. I didn't see it happen, but... Uh, well, some of them are still alive. How is that possible? I did find the remains, though, here. there's Most of the sheep are dead. Some of them are still alive. But I'm going to have to get rid of these pistons, and I'll probably put stained glass there. So corresponding to the color of each of the sheep but it's going to be a big thing getting them all replaced unfortunately one more thing to add to the fix list uh, but hope you guys enjoyed today's episode thank you for watching if you have any ideas for the mushroom forest uh, biome enhancement project please let me know i want to like redo the whole ground and everything give it a custom look probably a lot of this path block and a uh, bunch of leaves vines Maybe some dead trees that, that grow over. I don't know. I, I need to get some inspiration for it. But uh, should hopefully look cool. And then we got to think of what to put here for a feature as well. Like, should we put houses in here? Maybe some big building? I don't know. Should be fun, though. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye-bye.